Hi, good afternoon here. Tom Stewart with Service Smart Business Moves. I'm um, switching gears. Forgive me. I should be getting good at that by right now. Um, getting a little bit of a late start here, but uh, Liz can explain all those details. How are you doing, Liz? I'm well, Tom. How are you doing today? Well, I mean, I can see since you're running late that you're not doing as well as you could be, but it's okay. It's all right. How, how are you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. Hey guys, thanks so much for inviting me back on your uh, on the program. I appreciate that, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this because I think it's really good information you're about to cover here. Yeah, I don't think there's a person out there that's not excited about figuring out how can they get more administrative help for their business, more support staff, if you will. Where you know, especially you know, if you can tap into a, a higher caliber talent at a lower price point. I mean, what's not to like about that, right? No kidding. Exactly. Before we, and you know, I'm so, I'm so surprised more businesses aren't doing this. Um, leveraging, you know, overseas talent for their own business. You know, with the, uh, the wage differences, the living standard differences, you're able to get some top talent for, you know, the fraction of the price that you'd pay here. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to, I, I've got a blank sheet of paper in front of me to take all my notes here today. Normally, I just jot on like whatever scratch piece of paper I see today. I'm like, I'm prepared. Yeah. Only one piece of paper, Liz? Yeah, I got my journal in case I need more. It's okay. I'll you, write small. you got you've got good handwriting. Yeah, I do have tiny writing. So uh, before we get uh, before we forget, why don't we uh, just go over our schedule for uh, for the balance of the week? Obviously, we know what we're doing today with with, with Greg. Um, tell us a little bit about Cassie, Liz. Uh, so Cassie is my son's girlfriend, fiance, and she is in the medical field. She is um, currently in school. She'll tell you what she's doing, but she's um, in nursing school. And her entire family is in the medical medical realm. So she has just some insight into what's going on and what she's actually seeing versus what uh, you know, we hear a lot of these rumors and it's hard to know what's true, what's not true. Well, I can tell you what Cassie's going to tell us is going to be the truth, at least from her perspective here in Olympia, Washington and, and what we're seeing. So I thought it would be interesting. And Wednesday, Aja Holiday is joining us. I wonder how many people out there know Aja. Oh, it's shocking to me if anybody doesn't know her because she's so amazing. But I guess it makes sense that people might not know her for sure, Tom. Uh, so um, Aja has been Laura Smith's um, operations manager for, uh, gosh, I don't know how many years. She'll tell us how many years, but a while. And she has gone through the ringer with some stuff. And she's going to talk to us about uh, the different struggles, how how things are for an operations manager versus for for the owner of the company. And she's going to give us some insight into what we're looking for in a good operations manager and some of the things that we need to stop doing <laughs> to mm -hmm. keep good operations managers because they they don't they don't grow on trees, y'all. You some of you know that already. Now, if you really think about yep. this, you know, if they had an all-star team for operations managers, Aja would be on it. She'd probably be the captain. Um, and to get that type of insight in terms of, you know, this is how you make that relationship work and this is what you need to be looking for and this is how you need to manage that relationship, that's uh, – <laughs> this, might, this might be one of the more valuable uh, – discussions that we, we've had on Smart Business Moves. Absolutely. So I, I'm creating a list of questions um, that I know I want to have answered. If anybody else has any questions that they think they're going to want to know from Aja, feel free to reach out. All right. Speaking of questions, that brings us to Thursday, which is on the spot Thursday, our rapid fire Q&A session where Liz, myself, and our special guest each get one minute to answer your most pressing questions. 
Do you have a hint as to who our uh, secret guest is for this Thursday? Uh, so an interesting fact about this guest is that he, he um, at one time owned a mall. <laughs> M-A-L-L, mall. Yeah. Okay, not like a, some type of crude ham or use, but like a... No, yep. Double mall. L's shopping mall. A shopping mall. Okay. So that's a unique uh, person right there. And I'm, I'm thinking I may have just blown who this person is because anybody that knows someone who owned a mall, <laughs> probably yeah. only one of them out there. But... Well. I don't see anybody guessing yet, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, can you see on the right hand of your screen where uh, comments are showing up? Oh, yeah, let me get over there. All right. Hey, Denise. Okay, I'm gonna silence my phone before I go on. <laughs> try all right uh, greg you want to go ahead and uh get us started and just maybe give us a, a little bit of background as to how you uh first started using overseas talent and how that evolved and take it any way you want to go sure and i don't remember what brought me to using uh, overseas talents um I forgot. I, I I just somehow stumbled upon it. I remember um, old desk. Um, I use Upwork, but it used oh, to be yeah. called. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I forgot about that. that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of platforms online where you can use and they connect business owners with uh, workers. And the great thing about this is that it's not limited just to the United States. That means you're able to find good talent overseas um, in places where the cost of living differs wildly. Uh, I actually, uh, I was talking to you earlier, Tom, I actually did a, a blog post on this topic, just to get my thoughts straight. And one of the examples in my blog post is Venezuela. Now, I have a writer in Venezuela, great guy, does an awesome, awesome work. In Venezuela right now, the minimum wage is around four cents per hour, four cents USD per hour. Uh, of course, you know, you get up to 10, 20 cents, but he's making three fifty an hour, $3.50, three, $3.50 per hour. So he is banking. Now, what this means, when, when you can leverage overseas talent like that, you're able to get the cream of the crop because the local businesses over there can't compete with your Western, uh, with your wages uh, coming from the U.S. or Europe or, or whatnot. So there's virtually no competition to get the best talent. You just have to know how to find the talents. Well, is that what you're going to share with us today? I would be glad to. Um, right. and, and if you were with us uh, the other week when Greg was here, he pointed out that backlinks are a really good way to improve your SEO. If you heard what he just told us, he wrote a blog article on this. So I suspect when we're done, He's going to share that link with us and we're going to take that link and we're going to put it on our resource page on cleaning business today. And that's yet another backlink. So he can maintain that first page status for not one, but two cleaning oh. companies in the uh, city of Dallas. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, we, we appreciate their coming and sharing all of these like awesome tips with us. Did get any? Oh, no ideal candidates, Karen. Well, probably after today, you're going to have a little bit better uh, insight into how to do that, I'm guessing. Liz, sorry, I had a little trouble hearing you. My, I guess my connection must not be that, that good this time around. Um, Karen, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but Karen just uh, entered in chat that she's uh, run ads in Upwork but didn't find any ideal candidates. Okay. Um, don't add, huh? don't, don't give up, Karen. So where do we start, actually? Um, 
<laughs> I guess <laughs> there's so much. Well, first, Karen, my question to you is what kind of job are you hiring for? Is it something long term that is somebody that you need at your business uh, there for full time? You know, let's say a customer representative or something. Or are you looking for some someone that would be a short term assignment? Let's say, uh, you know, you need to do some data entry or uh, some, uh, you know, website maintenance. What kind of job are you look? Uh, what kind of person are you looking for? Well, you know what? While well, she's answering that, Greg, you brought up a really good point. I think a lot of people like me don't really know all of the different things that they could do. Like right now, you just said um, do some website update. I, I didn't know they could do that. How would they? I don't understand. How would that even? Can you sort of run through some of the stuff? that they do well sure like uh, my web developer uh lives in jamaica and i don't actually i, I he's not long term but he's my go-to guy I, I hired him through upwork and he does an outstanding job um uh, taking care of things that i just frankly don't you know want to have you know don't have time for but karen wants long term um long term i approach differently I've been on uh, Upwork or Odesk for you know a decade, and over that time, I actually caught uh, some. I guess uh, I noticed a pattern. The people that work for me long term, that you know, customer service more or less, uh, were the ones that the, the overachievers, the ones that performed exceptionally well were the ones that had just joined Upwork. That is, they didn't have time to really accrue a lot of you know great reviews. Um, while those that I hired that had a ton of great reviews, I mean, like this perfect resume of five star, five stars, five star. Because on Upwork, they, you can rate you know rank the workers. Anyway, those proved out to be you know somewhat mediocre, and uh, the pattern uh, occurred over and over again, which I had to pay attention to. So. Here's my advice to you. If you're looking for long term, first, go after the workers that don't have a ton of good reviews, uh, or, or my mistake, don't have a lot of reviews. You want to find the ones that are new to Upwork. Uh, I kind of, my guess is that those that are really good at what they do will not be on Upwork for long. They're going to be snatched up by a company and work their long term. While those that are mediocre will actually just you know the company will stop working with them they'll go back to upwork and of course you know I know I do this you don't want to give anyone a bad review you want to be nice and you know give them a leg up for the next job so those five-star reviews my guess is that just it's business owners being nice um, so first go after the folks that are new to upwork um, let me give me one second. I actually just wrote about this topic, and um, I have it right here. My little strategy. So I'm sure that all of you are familiar with Upwork. I love Upwork because that's proven to be the you know uh, the best uh, platform out there for me. Um, with Upwork, you can specify uh, the criteria of who you're looking for, and you, you know what? First, we didn't, Greg. We didn't really talk about this, and I don't know if it's practical or not. But I'll just throw this out there. Would it be useful if maybe you logged into Upwork and shared a screen and kind of showed us a little bit about what we'd be looking, looking at, looking for? Yeah, uh, sure. I'm kind of new to this. So I don't know how I'm going to, how I'm going to do that, but uh, that is actually a really good idea. You should have an icon down there in the tray as uh, share screen. On my um, computer, it's like on a bar. It's on a bar at the bottom. Same with your mic and, and camera control. And leave studio. Okay, here we go. And let me try this here. So share screen, perfect. All right. So I should be seeing something on my side to bring it 
on stage. I don't see it yet. Oh, there you go. Bang. All right, there we are. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we got the Let me get over here. Okay. There we go. Here we are. So I logged into my um, Upwork account for. Uh, Can you make that full? My, uh, oh yeah, of course. All right. So Upwork's fantastic. So up here, let's say you want to find, you know, actually, let me ask you, uh, what kind of Karen? What kind of uh, position do you have? Or rather, let me, uh, I think a customer service rep is probably the most often searched for a hosting company. Like what, what would a customer service rep do? Answer your phones or handle problems or what, what would they do? <laughs> well, for Emily's maids, uh, my second maid service, Jill does, oh my God, she does everything. She takes care of the calls. She takes care of the ladies in the field, you know, troubleshoots issues. Um, she pretty much takes care of the business for me. Um, it's it's really nice. I, you know, I guess I, maybe I should be more involved, but I'm, I'm hardly ever involved with Emily's maids. Um, so she does everything. With Dallas maids, I have Norma, and Norma is great. She does customer service. She helps ladies in the field, but she is there to help support my office staff so uh she's there as a backup she's there uh, to take care of any assignments that my office staff needs and she's there in case uh jill from emily's maids needs to take off for vacation or something or whatever norma can go in there and take the role of uh jill and so norma's pretty much uh, uh she does pretty much everything which is a huge help so let me get back over here so oh this yeah is my upper up to work screen here and first thing I do is up here, I turn US, oh yeah, US only, make sure that's all. Uh, yeah. And then I prefer to have only freelancers because you're hiring the, the individual. You, you don't want to hire an agency and have a middle person. You want to have them work directly for you. Okay, perfect. I go for 10 and below. You can, spe you can actually specify less in the actual job that you're, you're posting online. They have to be a uh, native and bilingual. Uh, the other day, when I was, you know, writing the blog post, I was doing a search and I found, uh, oh, I found the perfect. Um, I would have hired her, but I don't have any position. She's, um, she's from Canada. She lives in South America. So you're getting like Western talent, perfect English for South American pricing. I think it was a uh, uh, country she uh, lived in, but she would have been perfect. So native and bilingual. Um, for me, you don't, I don't know if you don't need this, but we do need somebody who speaks Spanish. So you don't really worry about, and, oh yeah, you just fill this in later. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. Or any, amount, well, yeah, if you're looking for someone that hasn't done anything on here, no earnings. Okay. Okay, so that's the first step that's is it, set up who you're searching for. Mm -hmm. And so here you have a list of candidates. Um, you know, Ray Mark from Costa Rica, my uh, uh, my VA for Emily's maid, she's, she's from Costa Rica. And she was born and raised there, but she, she sounds like the American girl next door. There's no accent whatsoever. Um, and so here you have your pool of candidates. Now, they don't have any reviews. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's pick. Let's pick her or Oriana. And why did so you pick their, her? Right? Oh, sorry. Why did you pick her? How do you decide who to pick? Or uh, <laughs> oh, hourly rate kind of catches my attention there. Four fifteen hour, um, yeah, that's that's why. Um, okay. So, all right, she has it where you can 
she has some package uh, prepackaged projects that you can hire her for. But you can come down here to employment history. And not much employment history, you know, year here, year there. Um, when I see something like that, I kind of pass. Uh, you want you want stability. Let's check out Ray Mark. All right, great. Uh, he worked at a hotel, five star hotel, customer service. Uh, definitely has that experience. Um, Yeah, he's someone I might, you know, might look at four years at, in customer service here. And uh, currently he's working at a hotel, so he's employed. So that would be a solid candidate. Um, he's from the Philippines, but lived in Costa Rica. The Philippines, you know, if you're looking for workers, they have hardworking, honest uh, people that, well, they're actually kind of famous for that. So Philippines is a great place to hire. Uh, the only caveat is that uh, don't expect them to uh, have, well, th they don't really take the initiative, but if you have a clear set of instructions, a guide for them to follow, they usually do a really good job. So this is someone I would definitely consider. That's interesting that you said that they don't tend to take the initiative. I would have thought just by the fact that they're on Upwork, that they would be the type of people that take initiative. Interesting. Good point. Maybe, maybe that's true. Um, you know. Uh, well, you've been doing it for a decade. I'm guessing you know. <laughs> um, well, I've, I've, I've hired two workers from the Philippines. The one person who did my YouTube videos, um, oh, he did a great job. And the second one, actually, she works for me now. She's actually our quality assurance um, person. She listens to the calls, make sure everything's taken care of, make sure we, we're not missing anything, um, which, by the way, is, is, is fantastic. If you can hire somebody to listen to the calls, make sure nothing's missed, and making sure that everybody is providing top service, um, you don't have to worry about missing appointments or you know missing things on the customer's to-do list. He, she's been really a really huge help. Um, but you know, with her, along with, with everybody that works for me, I, I try to have a very easy to understand uh, operation manual or, or procedures so they can refer to it uh, so they know what to do uh, for the job and you know more importantly, so they don't have to come to me all the time. Uh, so, but for me, I've had the best luck, luck in, in Latin America. Okay. Latin America. And so, right um, there, I think she's do you see Karen's I'm comment sorry? here? Do you see Karen's comment, Greg? Do we take into consideration how much money that made, or how much money uh, that they I made? I think on probably Upwork? they made. Yeah. Okay. Um, like I said, on Upwork, I want to find somebody who's new. I want to find the good talent that hasn't been snatched up uh, by you know another company. And the way to do that is is not to look you know, for those that have been on there for a while that have, you know, uh, made some money on there, the way to do this is just go after those who haven't been hired yet. And I, th I think that's what you mean, correct? Whether they have made money on, on Upwork. I would, I would yeah. think so. Yeah, I'm sure she'll answer in a second. What yeah. about, she wants someone to take over the hiring process to start she wants them to screen do reference checks is that something that you have experience oh, yeah. with hiring someone i'm sorry liz could you repeat that i didn't get that sure um karen is saying that she wants someone to take over the hiring process on um, screening reference checks and all that is that something you have experience with oh yes yes absolutely and uh, Norma does that for Dallas Maids, and to have a VA to take care of that takes up takes so much time off your plate because you want to interview as many applicants as you can. You want to get as many calls as you can because in order to find the quality, you got to kind of sift through the uh, quantity. 
and to have the VA take care of that is invaluable. How we do it is we have a phone number where applicants can call in and they'll call in, they'll get Norma and we have questions that are all deal breakers with the most common deal breaker at the very top. And the goal of the interview is pretty much to find any reason not to hire them. So if you can imagine, you know, over after hundreds of phone calls, we might get, a, you know, four or five good applicants that we might want to come in for an office interview. So having somebody who can take that, all that, uh, all those applicants, all those calls, and pretty much just send us the ones that are already qualified really allows you to pick from the best. So until they just call Norma. Are they yes. in the time zone or I mean uh, oh yeah like, no, ask so many questions. No, yeah, no, the phone number that we list in our ads are you know would, would be Norma's direct phone number. And so each of my staff has their own line, even the virtual uh, uh, staff. It looks, so it looks like a dial phone, phone call directly. You're using a you're using a voice over IP system and it looks like if they're dialing a Dallas number, but it's routed to South America. Exactly. And so in this no case, Mexico, that's where it's from. Sorry, Greg, what were you Sorry? saying? Sorry? <laughs> we both have a little bit of a lag, Greg. <laughs> um, I was asking if there's ever any time zone. Um, so, oh, by the way, this reminds me, Liz, thank you for this lag. When you hire a VA, make sure they have a very solid internet connection, especially if you're doing VoIP. You want phone calls to go directly to them, and you want no interruption whatsoever, no static. Uh, you want them to look sound like they're like next door. So making sure that they have solid internet is important. And of course, that's one of the reasons why you want to actually talk to them via Skype before hiring them. I usually talk to the top, uh, my top three. Uh, I always talk to my top three uh, uh, choices because I need to hear, you know, how do they sound over the phone? Is their internet, you know, internet connection good? Uh, do they sound professional? Are they? Do they sound friendly? But uh, yeah, there's one requirement: make sure they have good internet connection. You are looking at their qualifications and their job history. Um, are you? Do you just kind of take that at face value? Is there any way that you can verify any of that? Absolutely. You can just simply call the company. Okay. So you would do I wouldn't call the company. I don't speak Spanish. But yes. And so, yeah, you got to call references. Um, I would say probably one of the biggest things that helps me is running a disk assessment. Uh, the company that we use is fantastic. They email a disk assessment. And so the disk assessment pretty much uh, tells who you are as a person, you know, your, your personality, what do you like, uh, what environment you work best in. And after I have my top three candidates chosen, the great thing about this company that I work with is that we will talk, uh, I'll talk with one of the reps who's able to analyze the personality test. And that, and let him know what the job is, they're able to determine which one would make the perfect fit. And that makes a huge difference. So yes, check references at this assessment. I love that. Uh, and of course, afterwards, when you have the disc, this assessment, uh, you can keep it in your, your, your office. So when you need to talk to an employee, uh, an employee, uh, an employee uh, or a worker on a delicate topic, you can read the this assessment and figure out what's the best way to approach them? Um, what's the best way to communicate with them in order to have a more constructive talk? Yeah. Do you run any type of background check? I mean, like an example of what Karen's looking for, somebody to handle the hiring process. I'm assuming that that person would have personal information on your job candidates, like social security numbers and birth dates and those types of things. Um, no, we, we actually, no, we don't do background checks. I, I don't know how I would start with that because you're working with people in other countries. I 
so we haven't done background checks. Um, right. I don't, you know, after you talk to them, after you uh, uh, get their job history, uh, talk references, do the risk assessments, and get a good feel of who they are, um, I haven't had any trouble at all. Okay. So obviously, obviously it's working. I'm just thinking if they have access to that confidential information, like in Karen's case, what, uh, what, you know, potential problems would you need to anticipate and what do we do to, to try to mitigate those? Mm -hmm. So she wants to have them take over for the hiring process. Correct. Screen, record checks. I don't see any problem with that. I mean, you find a, you know, a good worker who has a VoIP or a VoIP line or be able to talk on the phone and just, they can easily take care of that for you. I, I don't, uh, right. actually, this would, be, this would be the ideal you know, job for a VA. I'm just thinking, would you want to have a workflow where that VA doesn't have access to like social security numbers and things like that? Absolutely. Good question. Um, oh, well, in my hiring process, you know, they take care of the, um, the initial calls, the um, the first phone interview. Right. Which pretty much beats most of them out. And they don't have access to the to the to their personal information. Okay. The very few that make it to an office interview come to our office for an in-person interview, and my staff here will you know take that information through a uh, our employment application. So we'll sit them down. They'll, you know, they'll write out, uh, complete our employment application, which you know requires that information, and we'll do the interview. So that's not outsourced. And uh, actually, you're right. That, that's probably not a good idea to outsource that anyway. Uh, but you don't really need to, I don't think, um, since applicants usually get that information in the office anyway. I think like with my situation, I use um, People Matter and they put that information in and then we can't access it after that, I don't think. I think we can just see like the last four of the SOCH or something like that. So we might be, I don't know, that might make it a little bit easier. <coughs> but yeah, I can see, so security has just really never been a concern of yours, Greg. You've never really felt a need to worry about that aspect. I'm sorry. So you've never really felt the need to worry about that aspect of security. It hasn't really ever come up or. Um, no, frankly, I mean, maybe I should, but if they're here for an interview, an office interview, and yes, they put that information um, down. Uh, What's the? How would that get into the wrong hands? Um, I guess is my question. Uh, I, I'm all for security, and especially where security, you know, is definitely. Needed. But I, I don't know what would motivate anyone to, I don't know, uh, run in and, and and use those information for themselves. I, you know, I don't think there's much of an issue there. Are there any special challenges in managing, I guess it would be, you know, a VA, be it, you know, in one state over or halfway around the world, I'm, I'm sure there's some challenges, but you know, what do, how, how do you manage somebody that, 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 that's working in another part of the world? Are there any tools, uh, you know, IT, you know, apps out there, any, any tricks there that, that are helpful? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, that's one of the reasons I love up, Upwork, is that the workers have to download software to, to their computer, which monitors one how active they are on their computer, and two provides periodic, you know, periodic uh, screenshots of their screen. So you can go in there and see how active they are, and you know, see what's on their screen. So you know that you know they're not just chatting away on Facebook. Upwork gives you that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me, yeah, if you like, I can share my screen again and show you. Cool. Yeah, I had no idea. I've never <laughs> heard anybody mention that before. 
Yeah, and, and everybody I don't work for Upwork, I'm like telling them crazy. Okay, anyway, I'm just Upwork's just a great, great uh, uh, platform. So, so let's go up here. Oh, yeah, pull it up. Yay. So here's my jobs, my people. Um, let's go to let's go to Norma. And the work diary is what you'll find most interesting. So here are the screenshots. The green indicates how you know how active they are, uh, but you know please note that you know if they're on the phone, they may not be as active as you know as this would lend you to believe. So with a customer service rep who's on the phone a lot, expect don't expect this uh, uh, you know high green bar. But if they're someone that works constantly on the computer, like maybe your web guy, then the activity will be higher. So don't you know low green you know one or two greens for Norma is not anything to worry about. Let's go to, let's see what this is. Oh, she does payroll. There you go. Here's your candidate, Karen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. So you Don't can check and see what they're doing on the computer, <laughs> which is very useful. <laughs> so that's interesting. There you go. When you're looking, at, hmm. so when you hire somebody through Upwork, are you paying? You pay Upwork, and they pay the the overseas talent. How how do you pay your? Um, yeah, yeah. How do, how yeah, Upwork is, is great. You pretty much pay Upwork, and uh, Upwork pays your. Hmm? Well, her hours, you, you set hourly. You can set an hourly rate, or you can set a flat rate. With Norma, of course, it's hourly rate. So, uh, she's at an hourly rate. So let's say you know, she works at nine dollars an hour at ten hours. That's ninety dollars. Um, but Upwork does take a small cut of that uh, from the contractor and from the business. But if they're long term, the cut goes down. So the cut, you know, the amount that Upwork takes out of this, you know, out of what you pay uh, at first is a little bit more. But of course, they you know, recognize that long term talents, you know, they give you a deal. So the great thing too is that Upwork does it all. I mean, they take care of the payments, they take care of the monitoring. Um, they have a great platform for finding, you know, more workers. Um, I love Upwork. Oh yeah, Liz. So, Greg, what I'm hearing is if it says $9 an hour, I also am not paying any payroll taxes. I'm not paying any additional fees, just the $9 per hour. Is that correct? No, um, Upwork takes, okay, uh, let's say, I think it's, is it 10% starting out? I don't recall, but let's say it's 10%. So. Okay. Let's say I want to pay somebody five dollars an hour. Okay. Knowing that Upwork will take ten percent of that, I will, you know, probably up at you know ten percent to what five fifty five fifty five. That way, I can make sure they get they get paid. So Upwork takes the pay out of the worker's uh, paycheck. Um, okay. So that's how Upwork gets you know gets gets paid. And frankly, 10% or maybe it starts at 20% when you start. Um, it's, you know, I, I thought about skipping Upwork and doing this by myself, and just work directly with the uh, the contractor. But um, Upwork makes, makes it so easy and the tools are so useful. You know, that extra amount is well worth it. And isn't that completely against their their policies? I'm sure you can't just hire somebody off the platform, can you? I don't know. Um, I suppose you could, you know. Yeah, I, I think you could. Um, I'd have to do that, but I see no reason why not. 
now if you go through an agency through Upwork, the agency will usually have a contract saying that you can't take their worker away. Um, oh, okay. But then again, if you want a good VA, I would just hire directly. Okay. Hmm. What What are some of the things, Greg, that you've had the most success with um, hiring people to do? I mean, I hear you say customer service, but is that they answer your phones when it rings? When you say customer service, what all is encompassed in that window, uh, in that umbrella? Well, uh, it really depends, Liz. So for Emily's, I said, you know, Jill pretty much does everything. Customer service, taking care of ladies, well, making sure they have the right schedule. Okay. Um, Norma does customer service here along with payroll and uh, some other things. Um, things that I've hired for in the past, like my web developers from Jamaica, my video editor is from the Philippines, my uh, uh, quality assurance persons from the Philippines. Explain I, that my, one, I had right? this great what? Explain the quality assurance. How are they doing quality assurance when they can't check any jobs? <laughs> oh, the calls that we have are all recorded. So they, they, they listen to all the call recordings for that day. And they listen to the call recordings, making sure that all the staff is following the right procedures, making sure that we get the information that we get from the customer. Let's say a customer wants to do something um, <laughs> Uh, as a, a to-do list she makes sure that that's in the uh, job so when they're printed out for the ladies we don't miss anything uh, so all the calls are recorded and that's how she does it you're making sure the sales team and the the other people who are talking and interacting with the client are doing what they're supposed to do as opposed to quality assurance of making sure that the cleaning team yeah and you know, oh, okay. not the cleaning quality yeah and Oh, no, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm talking about our customer service on the phone. So, you know, there's she's caught some really big mistakes. You know, for example, you know, maybe somebody had the wrong date for the customer. Uh, so she saved us so many times on so many human errors. Uh, so it's been great. But no, quality assurance, I'm talking about on the phones with my office staff as they work with our customers. For, for somebody who has never used a VA before or up or, you know, certainly this, 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 this idea going for overseas talent, you know, if, if you had to think of like one job or one activity, that would be like a really easy place to start. What can, what would that be? Where to start to, to find a VA? I mean, a lot of times, I mean, it's everything from, you know, I need somebody to design a brochure to I need somebody to do something on my website or, you know, I never have enough time to keep up with my social media and make sure I'm posting enough on Facebook and, you know, Instagram and, and so forth. Is there anything that's out there that cleaning businesses typically wrestle with that's really low hanging fruit that, you know, some things are, I'm assuming, are harder to outsource than others. Is there something that's just really not that hard to find people that are that have the skill set to do it, and it's not terribly difficult to train them and get them to the point where they can be productive and in, in taking something off of off of our plate. Good question. Um, good question. There, I mean, you search Upwork, and there, there's so much talent. Um, you know, not only customer service, you're looking at people that are, you know, can do great copywriting. Um, you can look for people that can do web design. I have a great guy who does our Excel sheets, you know, when we need some fancy Excel done to our uh, uh, Excel sheets. Uh, you know, designs, I wouldn't hire a designer. I would probably go through 99 designs, but we were talking about long-term uh, employment. When I look for somebody to do just like, um, uh, um, one job and let's say that job is you know very important um, you know in addition let's see you can't uh, I guess you, they will have a lot of reviews but this is what I do I find I try to find three candidates to to do the job for example Jeff who's a Philip you know from Philippines and did our YouTube videos 
before I hired him, uh, I needed to make sure that I found good talent. So I hired three uh, video editors to do the same video. Um, and I had simply picked the best one. And Jeff was by far the best one. So I, I was able to see his work and see the product uh, before I hired him for all the videos. And so he did all my videos uh, for YouTube along with a bunch of other stuff uh, on and off. So I, that's actually another little trick that I use is hiring great people to do the same project to see who's best. Hey, Liz, what's up? When you say you hire them to do your videos, do you mean edit videos that you filmed or do they film the videos? Oh, no. Uh, for our YouTube series, when I was first doing our YouTube uh, series, you know, Clean Freaks, um, we did all the raw video, but I needed somebody to edit the video to add a little cool graphics and uh, lettering and, and stuff like that just to kind of refine the product. I and, gotcha. Uh, yeah, and I actually use that example in my blog post. Uh, the first two videos that I didn't pick were, were, <laughs> were cringeworthy, but uh, <laughs> the work that Jeff did was great. But on Upwork, um, you know, you can find you can find so much talent. Um, you know, it's it's amazing. You know, I, looking for a copywriter the other day, I came across you know some copywriters that had uh, writers that had uh, Emmy nomination. I'm thinking Emmy nomination. Of course, you're talking about $175 an hour, but you know, checking their website and googling you know their name, my goodness, I can hire an Emmy winning uh, or not wow. winning Emmy nomination writer there. So the talent's there, and all kinds of talent. So uh, uh, does that answer your question, Tom? Yes, it does. Sounds like it's the kind of thing that you just kind of have to jump into the deep end and do it to figure it out. Right. Well, I would say um, long term, like I said, just go after the ones that just jumped on. If they have a ton of great reviews, avoid those because if they haven't been picked up by a company, that's saying something. And two, that's if it's a short term project, like, yeah. And if, you could also hire three, you know, for a big project, you can hire three to do a portion of that product, the same portion, so you can see who's the best. And then there's your guy for then on out because it, it, it's the uh, hiring three people for one job, well worth it if you're going to use oh, them yeah. over and over again. Especially when it's so inexpensive anyway, and you're just doing one small piece of the project. I actually did that when I was looking to create a, a quick um, graphic. I, I, I did mm -hmm. that too. I think you told me that when we were um, in Fort Collins and um, hired three people. And, and so I did. And I think it was really smart and cheap. It still was way cheaper, even hiring three people. <laughs> um, I, I, Greg, have you ever yeah, had. I'll... Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Liz. I, I was going to ask if you've ever had a bad experience and, and what, what, Oh, Constitute yes. That experience. Yes, yes, yes. Um, good question. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, before I go, you want good copywriting on your website, hiring one writer, uh, well, hiring three writers to do one portion, that's the way to go with copywriting so you know who's a good writer. So uh, that's very important. As for who, you know, bad experiences, okay. Some countries' culture, um, I don't know, you want to avoid some countries because it's hard to find, you know, there's good people everywhere, but sometimes it's hard to find, um, you know, good talent among all the riffraff. Um, I would suggest for me, frankly, I try to stick with Latin America because one, it's in our same time zone. That means that you can communicate with them. You know, if they're in the Philippines, it's harder to communicate because the time difference. So sticking with, uh, you know, Latin America, great place to hire people. Um, bad experiences, well, uh, uh, you know, one country, I won't name countries. Um, I, I could never find somebody that was honest. Um, I've had, you know, for some reason, you know, people will lie about their resume, will lie about their skills. I have, I have one person lie about their sex, their gender. I don't know why why they thought that was important, but they lied about you know <laughs> what gender they were, and it, it's crazy. So you yeah. you have to 
Oh, you have to do your homework. That's, you know, of course, one of the reasons why you call them. Um, before you hire them, you want to, you know, talk to them and uh -huh. get a sense of who they are. And of course, you can do that, you know, through Skype or, or whatnot. Um, so for me, I've, I've had luck in the Philippines for computer work, programming or whatnot. Eastern Europe is a great place to find good quality talents. Um, for me, uh, Mexico, I found some really good hires through Mexico. Um, Central America, um, not so much, uh, you know, haven't had much luck in South America, but uh, where you look for, where you look for the talents is is important. I haven't had luck, okay, countries I, I haven't had luck in, India, China, uh, Bangladesh, Nepal, um, I, you know, haven't had much uh, luck there looking for workers. Okay. okay. But you like South America? Yeah, mostly for the uh, the same time zone because you want to be able to talk to them. You, you you know, you can hire a customer service rep in Philippines, but that means they have to, you know, stay up night and sleep during the day. And I don't know, with me, I just feel like I want to give whoever's working for me, you know, the less stress life, life as possible, I think it would be stressful working at nights. So, you know, Latin America has been, been perfect for us. But also, of course, a lot of my ladies speak Spanish. So, you know, that, you know, that helps too, having them understand Spanish. If you want somebody to do com compute, you said, you said like computer work, like programming, like website design, some of the more intricate stuff where you're, you're you know, in, installing forms and lead capture stuff. How do you, how do you know if somebody really has the, 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 the talent and the skill set to do that? Um, to me, that would be a little, little trickier. Well, going back to Upwork, you know, I, for long-term assignments, you know, I, I told you to pretty much try not to hire folks with a lot of reviews, go for the new ones because you want to find the, you know, the talent before it's, you know, taken. Uh, work like, you know, web development or uh, these are short-term projects. Like, you know, my Excel guy, he lives in Thailand, but he's from Eastern uh, Europe. Um, these short-term assignments, that's when the reviews come in handy. That's when you can look at the reviews and see how well they do. Um, that's when you want to look at the reviews. So look at the reviews helps. And as I said, also, if I have like a very important project that's gonna be very expensive, um, you know, with that, I would hire three uh, of the top people, top three people I could find for one portion of that project and simply pick the one that performs best. Okay. Hey, Liz. Hey, okay, so these are the six points that I marked down, Greg, that sound like they're pretty critical. Can you tell me if I'm missing anything? I heard that really important to have sure. a solid internet connection, like key, got to have a solid internet yeah. connection. Next one is make sure you call them first before you um, take them on for a long term. Make sure that you've spoken with them by Skype or something. Um, the next thing I have is check references. Check their references and do your own due diligence. Oh, Liz. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing I do when I when I consider them, before I talk to them on the phone, yeah. I'll actually ask them to send me an audio file of them just uh -huh. telling me a little bit about themselves. And that yeah. way I can listen to them and then uh, I can hear their accents. I can hear how professional they are. I can get a good feel of who they are. And that helps a lot. That saves a lot of time for yourself. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a, I would have never thought of that in a million years. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right, so send an audio file. You could, you could take it a step further, I guess, and ask them to, like, do a, you know, just record a video and send it to you, right? Yeah, I, I guess you could. Um, for me, if it, if, it, for, if it was a customer service rep, all I care about is how they sound on the phone and- Fair enough. Yeah. 
and I, I think they're probably less conscious about that too. I've, I've had them do, you know, video, um, but I think audio is just more easier for them. Okay. And I, you know, I, I might find myself being a little bit biased if I had a video where I, by audio, there's nothing there to bias me. I just either the accent is good yeah, or it is. So I, I like that. All right. Let me, let me run through the rest of these. Um, hire three people for a small piece. If you're doing a large project, sounds like that's critical. Hire a new person with very few reviews or no reviews. That's the key right there. Um, give them a disk assessment so that you know who they are, how they, how they work, and how you can talk with them. And that's yeah, that's, that's yeah. for, um, yeah. The disk assessment I only do for long-term employees that will be with me for a long time. Um, you know, for short-term projects, not so much. Okay. So I feel like this is like makes it seem a lot easier to me. Like, okay, there's not that many things that I have to do. Seven. I thought it was six, but now I know it's seven. And then if I can just do these seven things, chances are good that I'm going to have success. And it's the top of the hour. So <clears throat> if you haven't subscribed to Cleaning Business Today, really, really easy. Just go to cleaningbusinessday.com, email, first name, last name. You'll get our newsletter, have access to uh, late breaking news in the industry. Um, SBM Resources, Small Business Moves Resources, all one word is the extension off of our website. I'll drop the URL in chat if you want to have access to all our uh, downloads and other information that we've done in Smart Business Moves. And I'm sure Greg will be getting me a link to his blog post covering the discussion that we had today to build to his uh, rather heavy inventory of backlinks to his uh, website. Just send it to you. Cool. So we'll get that up uh, tonight or uh, tomorrow. I just want to make sure that we point out what Rosemary said on here, because that's exactly what Greg was saying, that th those good reviews don't necessarily mean that that they have great reviews that sometimes there's pressure there for them to get those. So thank you for that, yeah. Rosemary. Yep. Nobody wants to give a bad review. Yeah, it's true. Great. Right. As always, you are a wealth of useful information and unique information. And we need unique information during this unprecedented time that we're dealing with. Oh, good job, Tom. Good job. More so now than ever. Sure. Um, you're amazing, dude. Thank you, Tom. And thanks so much for having me you know, come back on the show. I hope I was useful and provided value for your viewers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, Greg. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thanks so much. You guys uh, take care, and we'll see you here tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye,